Hey guys, so I'm in Norway here with uh, Espen Matisson. I've been spending the last month here at uh, Wolfling Academy with Tommy and Espen training. So I want to take the opportunity here to go through some of the back take stuff that these guys do. Uh, any of you guys who watch the competition scene have seen them compete, uh, killing everyone on the competition scene with the uh, crab ride, the X hook, the barambolo. Uh, so this video, what we wanted to talk about was a position they use kind of called the X hook, which it's like a, a variation off of the crab ride, but it's a very powerful setup for finishing the back. Uh, a lot of the stuff they do with the crab ride and the X hook and the barambolo, to me, it's kind of analogous to like having a good triangle choke. Uh, if you don't have a good triangle choke, you can have a spider guard or a close guard, but I can show you all the setups in the world for the triangle choke, but if you can't finish it, it doesn't mean much. And I feel like the finish variations from the crab ride, the X hook, and the barambolo are kind of like that. If you don't have strong finishes in those, you can learn all these complicated guard systems, but you're missing one of the main uh, aspects of the finishing game, which is a really strong back take from the crab ride and the X hook. Uh, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and let Espen Matisson uh, take it away and show us some stuff. Hey guys, so today we're going to dive into the bow X position. It's a position I've used a lot. I used it throughout all my belts with a lot of success. And it's a very nice position because you're less exposed for counters there compared to the normal barambolo and it's way harder to do leg locks. So we're going to dive into that. So there's many ways to enter this position, but the most traditional way I'm entering it is from the traditional barambolo setup. So I'm, I'm holding it's, it's from this side. I'm holding the ankle and I'm grabbing the pants. I really like to grab the pants whenever I'm going for the barambolo because I feel I have more hip control. It's a stronger grip. If I'm going for the belt, it can fall off and also it can rotate around his waist so I can lose some control. So I'm grabbing the pants and then I'm putting my leg on the chest. This is actually very important. Because if I'm here, he can potentially cross face me or he can give me a hard time. But here, I'm controlling distance. And now I can invert without problems. When I'm inverting, I like to, when I'm going, I'm grabbing the pants here. This grip. So when I'm going, I'm grabbing. And now the most important thing is to pull myself in. A lot of people think that the barambolo is just about speed and fast movements. But in my opinion, it's all about being tight. You have to be tight throughout the whole process. So you have to be, go immediately to be tight. So from, from here, I'm gonna use the pan grip. I'm gonna use this pan grip and then pull myself in like this. And then chop down. This chop keeps him here. The pull makes him tight, but the chop keeps him there. So I'm chopping down with this leg and then lifting this leg. You see, I'm now in control of the knee. It's very hard for John to escape now, okay? And then, when I've isolated this leg with my legs, I don't need to hold this leg anymore. It's no purpose. So then I wanna focus on blocking this leg. Because this can be a, be a problem. He can start putting his leg on my chest, in my face or whatever. So I have to grab it as fast as I can. And then what I have to do is to get a good grip. A lot of people, they just grab whatever they can and then eventually they lose control and people make distance and they lose the position. So I'm grabbing the pants and I'm stiff arming. This stiff arm is making sure that I'm winning the battle because his leg is stronger than my arm. But once I'm stiff arm, it's very hard for him to win the battle. So look here, if John tries to move now, it's going to be hard. Or if he tries to make distance or whatever from this position, it's going to be difficult. So now I'm in the traditional barambolo and I want to go into uh, the, hook, the X hook. And the reason why I want to go into the X hook, there's uh, many different reasons. But one of the main are the I'm eliminating the possibility of being countered. If I'm here, you, you can see he can potentially counter me. Also, he can attack my legs. Boom, knee bars into 50-50 or even toe holds. Also, I have very limited opportunities to elevate him or lift him. The only thing I really can do is like use this leg. That's why I'm deciding to go here. So I'm lifting and then pummeling my leg under like this, opening briefly and closing again. Again, I'm focusing on being tight and controlling the knee. 
but this positioning changes everything. John cannot attack my legs anymore. He cannot counter the bare mono, so he cannot take my back. And look, now I can really mess around with him. It gives me a lot of possibilities, and I can attack from all kinds of angles. So it really doesn't matter what he's doing now, there's always a way from this position. Uh, my main attack from this position, and that I've used a lot in competition throughout the years, is the twister hook. I really like to set it up from here, because from this position, you can set up the twister hook in a safe way. Because uh, what many people uh, preach and say is like, you just have to kind of twist it somehow, here, boom, and then eventually you're gonna take the back. But look, I'm so exposed. So you can take my back quite easily. That's why if you use the X hook and you do it properly, it's gonna be really hard for him to counter. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna control here, use my legs and my arms to lift him on top of my chest. So I have to do everything at once. So boom and lift. And a very a small but uh, subtle detail is my arm here. You see, I'm not laying like this because now he can escape and get his hip back to the ground. So he can bounce out and escape. But look at my arm. I'm lifting and putting it like this. This makes it almost impossible for him to escape. Try to get away now. No way. There's no way. And another very important thing, when you lift, you don't lift him too far. Because you don't want to have him here. Because then he can start to scramble. So just lift him enough to have him on, on your chest. From this position, now he can try to counter. There's no way. No. And from here, I can slowly but surely take in my hook. Get it here. Kick out. And take the back. In a very safe and controlled way. So again, starting from the traditional Barambolo setup, I'm grabbing the pants, I'm grabbing the leg here. Right away, I cannot stress this enough, you have to make sure that you're tight from the get-go. You have to be here. And then you pull yourself in, try to get your ear as close as you can to his hip, and then chop the legs. When the chop is done, this arm doesn't have a purpose anymore, so you grab here, okay? Then lift, insert, and make the X. And from here, I'm in good control. Now, if I want to do the twister, I'm just gonna lift him on top of my chest, and then I'm gonna move my arm like this. Even if I'm doing nothing here, he cannot escape. Yeah, no way. It's such a strong position, like strong positional control, that it, he's gonna, gonna have a hard time. And then, when you have such a good control, you don't need to rush it. Because that's a big one in the Barambolo. People rush to the moves because they're not controlling, they're not tight enough. That's why you need to make sure that you have all the, those details in place. And from here, I just throw the hook in to the twister. I kick, grab, and get the back take. So, as you might see, there's a lot of benefits of having a strong X hook position in the Barambolo because it eliminates attacks from the opponent and you can attack in a very controlled and safe way. Yeah, guys, so uh, I can't stress enough the importance of some of these small details. Like, for example, when grabbing the pant leg, like using that fist underneath the calf and those little things. Uh, those little things are the things that make this stuff work and not work. So I've seen like the Barambolo and Crab Ride stuff in competition for a long time. But there's uh, you know, people that use it and then you can kind of get out and then there's people that use it and it's like they finish like 100% of the time. And Tommy and Espen with these positions, if you've ever watched them compete, they always finish with it. And these small details are really hard to find anywhere else. For developing it as well, I think it's a really good idea to do a lot of specific sparring starting in the position, right? Because ultimately the analogy I used in the beginning of like having a triangle choke, uh, you know, like you can set the triangle choke up, choke up from closed guard, from spider guard, from worm guard. So the setups for the triangle choke are all very different things, but the finish is always gonna have something in common, like how you finish the triangle choke. So I would say it's the same analogy with like the X hook and the crab ride. 
is that you really want to have a strong finish. So if you're really struggling to understand this stuff in the beginning, if you're only trying to learn it by setting it up in actual sparring, it may be hard to get to because you may struggle to actually set up the Baron Bolo and all that stuff. So uh, I've been doing a lot of specific sparring since I've been here. Uh, we've been trying to maximize the time training together to exchange info. And uh, I'll just start with like a blue belt or a purple belt in the position. And then I'll just spar from there. And as a problem comes up, I'll ask Espen to help me like kind of troubleshoot it. But I think doing a lot of specific sparring just going to the position. You know, doing a lot of specific sparring when you just start. Yeah. We just start in the position here and start building from this position is very useful because you're going to find that as soon as you start, problems are going to pop up, right? Like you may start and the guy kind of has his knees closer to his chest, right? So then you can't lift him. So then actually here, maybe you want to switch up to more of a crab ride type finish now and things like that. And we're going to do a future video on the crab ride as well. But, you know, these videos are going to function as a great overview. But for you guys to really develop these things, you need to spend a lot of in-depth time in the position, kind of playing with them to discover them. Um, and your guys' development of the position, is there any uh, advice you can give towards develop how you guys developed all your patterns and understanding? In general, is trying to be there a lot, is training it. Mm. Try, as you said, do specifics, but also impl uh, implement it into the sparring. But then you have also have to just play around. You have to be there and eventually you have to feel the position. That's yeah. the biggest one, because you cannot force the movements too much in that position. So eventually, if you do it a lot, you're gonna feel that. If they put the hip that way, you can do that move. If they put a hip that way, you can do the other move. So eventually it becomes very intuitive. Yeah. And to make that intuition stronger, you just have to use a lot of time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think one problem people have in jiu-jitsu in general a lot is that they see a technique or they learn a technique in an instructional or wherever, and then they want to force that technique, right? So because they're trying to force that technique, they don't pay enough attention to the response that their opponent is having. So like, for example, when I just showed it there, because I know me and Aspen have been uh, working this a lot, is like if the person tries to stack that or they keep their knees way tighter, it might be a little bit harder to pull them on top. So then you kind of stack more and transition into that. And we'll cover that in the future videos as well. But like he said, you need to like not only follow the instructional where you're learning the technique, but also leave some open um, kind of uh, open room for you to play with it and feel it out and understand because it, this isn't happening in an isolation, right? There's all these different patterns. So you need to try to spend a lot of time there and spar a lot. All right, guys. So we also want to show just a few different ways that you might get into this position from different guards and different setups. So that's the cool thing about this position. It's very accessible happens a lot if you like these kind of scrambles. So just to show one way of entering, it's from, like in general, from Matrix, it connects very well. But especially if they have the hip on the ground like this, for example, if you're doing an ankle lock, trying to finish the open up, boom. You throw the Matrix position in, and then as you go, when you're doing the Matrix, you get into this position. And then, same setup here, be tight. So, it can even happen if they're standing tall. You're doing the matrix, they're backstepping once you're going for it. You go into the positioning. If he's just standing, I'm gonna find my way to the back. So he's probably gonna try to hide the back and then I'm gonna grab the hip, go into the position, and then you're back into it again. So as you can see, it's very accessible. And if you really know this position, you're gonna find it quite natural. You end up in a scramble, for example, like this. You're passing guard. You feel you have to make something happen. You can just drop down to stuff. And from here, start finding ways into this position. Then go on your neck. As long as you have this hook, kind of like the matrix hook, doesn't matter if it's here or free. You just circulate in and boom, you make the X. And from here, you can start to attack. All right, guys, so uh, we'll be doing a lot more videos over the next month as well, both uh, Espen and Tommy, and we'll probably have Vergara on as well. Uh, so look forward to like some crab right videos, some collar sleeve, uh, probably matrix setups. There's going to be a lot of stuff on there. Uh, also, if you guys haven't seen, uh, they have a website, wolfingacademy.com. Uh, I'm going to put a description, uh, a link in the description for a discount code you can use in there as well to join. But again, like the uh, the amount of people that actually have information on how to do this, like crab ride, barambolo, uh, X hook stuff, is very very small. So uh, I think it's a great source to go to to really get up to speed on this stuff. Because to me, uh, jiu-jitsu is a relatively young sport, and in the future, I feel like these positions 
are gonna be just like the triangle choke, the arm bar, the omoplata. If you don't have good strong finishes in these things, it's gonna be a huge hole in your game. So this is a great location to go to to get all that stuff in one spot. Thanks guys.